A few things to mention, and we want that door pretty much closed by the time things start. We, this will be videotaped, as you know. So if you're having issues with that, let us know. We really don't care. No. <laughs> no, we just want to make sure that it's okay if you are video recording. Now, if you have, and I know nobody has one of these, but if you do, I'm going to quote my good friend Amy. Don't know how to silence it? Turn it off. We want to make sure the contestants have no interruptions at all. Okay? Wonderful. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant of arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the postmasters and the national rules that govern this contest. No one should enter the room or leave the room during the contestant's presentation. We don't like that, do we? <laughs> you may do so if time permits during the minute of silence. We like silence too, don't we? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you on that one. Also, there is no photography. If there's any arguments about that, it is on page 19, <laughs> with the exception of our official photographer, of course. The rest of you know. And on that note, no gavel, but that's okay. I can work without a gavel. The gavel's down there. Why is the gavel down there? That's okay. Let the contest begin! enjoy her as much as I have. She has a lovely, melodious voice, and she is here to serve you. Our contest mistress for tonight is Sharice Harrington. I know you're excited. I'm excited for you too. This year I get to be on this side and hosting such a marvelous event and I'm looking very forward to each and every moment of it. All right, let's just warm up real quick. Say to your neighbor, neighbor? Neighbor. Are you ready to have a good time? Are you ready to have a good time? And then the neighbor says? Yeah. yeah. I would like to recognize all the dignitaries in the audience with us this evening. I'd like to begin with the past international director, Deep Mar Connect, and Dick Story. Will you please stand? you a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have all of our immediate past district governors. Well, we have our immediate past district governors. Hey, this is Bob. This is not Memorex. That would be Joan K. Moore. Michelle Cable. Please give a warm round of applause to Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Ms. Donna Weston. Next up, 
we have the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, and that would be none other than that you stand as a group, and that will be all of our division governors. Thank you for And last but not least, please, as a group stand, all area governors. and everything that you do for Toastmasters. We really appreciate it. Now moving forward, I would like to give the speaking order for the Table Topics Contest at this time. Everybody ready? Got your pen? And before, I just want you to know there will be one minute of silence between each contestant for the judges, okay? First contestant, Steve Serby. Contestant number two, Theodore Travis. Contestant number three, Diane Bolash. Contestant number four, Barbara Green. Contestant number five, Teresa Banks. Contestant number six, Susan Horsefall. Contestant number seven, Bob Roman. And last but not least, contestant number eight, John Sarpolis. Now I would like to announce that the Sergeant at Arms will escort all the contestants out of the room except our first contestant. Madam 
Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. I'm speaking to a class of five-year-olds. What advice would I give them? I would say that time goes by very, very fast. Enjoy every single moment that you have. You grow up way too soon. Case in point, as a young man, when I was 18 years old, I graduated high school, left home, rarely came back. I came back to visit mom and dad probably twice a year, Christmas and over the summer. Over the years, I got married, have two kids, currently raising two kids. They're in college, almost out of college, almost off the payroll, but not quite yet. <laughs> However, two years ago, my father passed away. And I began to realize that after I had left high school, I probably came home maybe over the course of the last next 20 years, 20, 30 times. It was not often enough. I probably should have spent more time with my father before he passed. It was probably one of my biggest regrets in life. Therefore, as a child, as a five-year-old, you don't really learn to appreciate what you have until you're a much older adult. I try to teach my two children that they need to be responsible, and that as they grow, hopefully they'll visit home more often. <laughs> Therefore, as a young child, spend more time with your family, more time with your folks. Enjoy life while you can. Madam Toastmaster. Toastmaster, contestant number two, Theodore Travis. Your table topic question is, you are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? Theodore Travis. Madam Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, if I'm in a room full of five-year-olders, my advice would be this, to always trust your gut. Because someone's interest may end up in your painful experience. Let me take you to a story from when I was seven, just two years from five. <laughs> I have a problem. My problem stands about five foot six, five foot five. The meanest person that you want to meet in your life Angry like a bull, strong as an ox, knuckles so white you can strap matches from it. I mean, just intimidate. Facial hairs, tattoos, the worst part about it is my older sister. Her name is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that because of a 
control complex. <laughs> She's always trying to tell me, Theo, you need to do this. Theo, you need to do that. Juanita, leave me alone, please. <laughs> so Monday, I always wanted to just tell her how I feel and get it off my mind. So what she did was one day, which was two weeks after I had made that declaration, be careful what you ask for, I'm outside in the front plant. It's 11 o'clock, giving. Our kids are supposed to be in, but I'm special. I'm seven. I want to stay outside. My sister, being controlling as she is, she says, Thea, in a couple of minutes, you're going to have to take your butt inside the house. And she gets up, turns around, and walks inside the house. Now, my older cousin, Tasha, tells me, Thea, aren't you tired of your sister bossing you around? I'm like, yes. <laughs> she said, don't you want to tell her and give her a piece of your mind? I'm like, yes. She was like, don't you want to do it to her? I'm like, yes. She should have been an international speech contestant because I was inspired. <laughs> she said, what you need to do is you need to tell her this. When she come outside and she tell you it's time for you to take your butt in the house, you look at her in the eye and you tell her, no, you take your butt in the house. <laughs> now, my gut isn't telling me to do this, but it's Tasha. She's in it for me. My sister come out, seconds later, she says, Theo, it's time for you to take your butt in the house. I look at her, I turn around, I tell her, no, you take your butt in the house. And I turn around and walk. I don't know what happened that night, but I woke up the next morning with a headache, a backache, and a butt ache. So if there's anything I have to tell anybody, is to trust your gut. Madam Table Topic Master. <laughs> Table Topics Contestant Number Three Diane Bolash. Diane, you are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? Diane Bolash. and friends. I love five-year-olds, and I am frequently in the situation where I'm in front of them. But usually they're not interested in me. They're usually interested in my worms. I am a master gardener and a master composter. Did you know there was such a thing? Yes, I go into schools and I work with little kids who know all about wiggling and wriggling and squiggling. And we make that into a lesson about Mother Earth and recycling. If I didn't have to talk about worms, I think I would tell them that they should practice one thing every day. They should practice exploring their world, learning from it, experiencing new things, and making lifelong friends, even if you never see them again. You see, five is a very precious age. You've left the blanket behind when all your friends can see. 
you're stepping out on your own and have a relationship with an adult <coughs> other than your parents, your kindergarten teacher, and you're just figuring out what this body can do. And your job at five is to play. Test your limits. Test your skills. Test your feelings. What do you love to play with? And if you keep that attitude, that attitude your entire life, how could you ever go wrong? May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots, please. Tabletop is contestant number four, Barbara Green. You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? Barbara Green. What do I tell the eight-year-olds? 
What do I tell my adult students? Find the song of your heart. Find the melody of your soul. It's yours and yours alone. Contestant number five, <laughs> Teresa Banks. Your table topics question is, you are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? Teresa Banks. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and to our very honored guests. If I don't love anything else, I absolutely love to teach. And so if I were before five-year-olds, I would seriously say to them, remember one thing in life, that you must be prepared to be resilient. Mm. Now I would tell them that I realize that you are little bitty girls and boys, and that is a big word for all of you. But what it means is that in life, there are many things that will happen just like you see with mom and with dad. There will be times when you are in school and you are trying to do that math problem. And just like you learned how to go through the alphabet, remember you learned A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, just as you learned your alphabet, you will later learn math, and then you will finish grammar school, and you will go on to high school. Once you're done with high school, I want you to go to college. But no matter what you go through, no matter what happens in life, always remember that you will be able to get through anything. You will be able to accomplish no matter what you set your mind to. Never forget that, and that's what it means to be resilient. Stay in school, boys and girls. I will be here to watch you and help lead you along the way, and I wish you good luck. Madam Congress. We have one. We have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots, please.
Table Topics Contestant, number six, Susan Horsfall. Your Table Topics question is, you are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? Susan Horsfall. Always keep the steely. It's the best marble in the bunch. <laughs> Never put gum under your chair, <laughs> because your mother will certainly find out. And by the way, as five-year-olds, we all know there has to be a bedtime. There is a reason for that, because when you get my age, I'm going to bed the same time you are when you were five. <laughs> that would be between 7.30 and 8.30. Yes. <laughs> Learn how to walk and chew gum at the exact same time. Because when you get my age, it gets more difficult to walk at all. <laughs> always, always listen to your elders. But don't always do what they say. <laughs> You're five years old after all. Have fun. Get out there and enjoy life. We all know that as we go through the stages in life, pages in our book of life get written. But when you're at five, they get written, they get erased. They get written, they get erased. <laughs> you get do-overs. I get no do-overs. No repeats, no do-overs. Life is what it is when you get here. So my dear little five-year-olds, enjoy, have fun. You're in school for half days. You don't have to worry about bills and paychecks. You don't have to worry about significant others. Well, that may be the five-year-olds do have significant others. I do remember that little 10-minute nap on the carpet. <laughs> Judges, mark their ballots, please. Thank you. Table Topics, contestant number seven, Bob Roman. You are, your question, your Table Topics question is, you are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five-year-olds. What advice would you share with them about life? 
Bob Roman. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Now, class, as your instructor today, I am going to teach you about life. Now, first of all, how many of you like clowns? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You like clowns? Well, now, let me tell you, there's going to be some clowns you meet in life. <laughs> There'll be some clowns that won't be so good. What did you say? He asked me what I meant by that. Well, you know when someone doesn't share toys, or someone doesn't like to play with you or cause your names. I'm talking about people like that. But the best advice I can give to you is that treat other people as you want yourself to be treated. And then, make sure that, don't make assumptions upon anyone. Everybody is different, and everybody needs to know that we're all one people here on this earth. So don't prejudge, and watch for those bad clowns, and you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> while the judges complete their battle. Table topics contestant number eight. John Sarpalis. Your table topics question is You are before a class of five year olds. What advice would you share with them about life? You are before a class of five year olds. What advice would you share with them about life? John Sarpalis. Cindy Lauper said, girls just want to have fun. I think that applies to everyone in kindergarten to five years old. I learned a really interesting lesson as a softball coach. I, I coached girls softball junior high school, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And unfortunately, in the beginning, I approached them as if they were guys. They're not guys. <laughs> I don't think little people are, they don't think like I do. I thought it was about competition. I thought it was about winning. I thought it was about get out there and hustle, hustle, hustle. Well, I wasn't doing so well with my team winning. Then I had a stroke of genius. I said, forget this competition thing. Let's make it fun. So the next game, I, beforehand, I announced to the girls, we are going to spray everybody's hair bright red, and we're just going to go crazy. Well, they loved it. They loved it. They laughed. They giggled. They went nuts during the whole game. And they won big. 
<laughs> so the next game, I decided, well, let's do something else silly. So these are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. They all had braces. Okay. Those with braces are in the infield. Those not in the outfield. <laughs> and they thought that was a wonderful idea. <laughs> the heck with the stats. Doesn't matter who could play where. It was a matter of braces. <laughs> but we got to the championship on these winning ideas. <laughs> and so the last game, I don't know why, but Wilmette has a lot of twins. So it was twins in the outfield and singletons. Do you ever realize you're a singleton? I, I didn't know that, but in the twin world, we're singletons. Singletons in the outfield. Well, we won big and we captured it. So it's about making it fun. That's what I want to tell these kids. I want them to enjoy it. Just like I'm enjoying Toastmasters and having fun. Contest chair. <laughs> Please remain silent while the judges complete ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters.
So now we get to have a little fun with all of our contestants. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call all of our contestants forward, and I'm just going to ask you a little tiny question. All right, so in order in which you appear, or which you drew, would you please come on up here? Snoopy cards instead of the usual one, two, threes. It was an ace. So you're an ace. Now I'm looking at your profile and I see you like outdoor adventures. Would that be yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just would like you to tell me briefly maybe something outdoors that you enjoy doing. The things I used to do, I used to be a pilot, scuba diver, skydiver, <coughs> coast guard rescue. Then I got married and had two kids. That's the greatest adventure of them all. <laughs> well, we'd like to thank you with a certific uh, certificate of participation for a job well done. Thank you. Testing. Testing. One, two, one, two. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, Theodore, I see quite a few things on your profile. You know, I'm supposed to ask you your club, aren't I? You can't. Okay, Steve, real quick, we're going to rewind. Can you tell us your club and... 6244, talk to Lincoln Shire. All right! I'm representing 219 Toastmasters Club 3288. All right. Okay, so. <laughs> now, I see a lot of things on your profile. What I'd like to ask you briefly is you say your favorite quote is do what others won't do now so you can have in the future what others can't get. Can you elaborate a little bit on that, very briefly, and just tell us why that's your favorite quote? The reason why it's my favorite because it stands true. Do what others won't do now so you can have in the future what others can't get. Many times, individuals pace by life. They just exist in life instead of actually making it count. And they're afraid to step outside of their comfort zone. So what I like to do is I like to shake things up a little bit and step outside of the comfort zone and I end to seem to be in a better place because of it. Even right now, I'm standing in front of all these beautiful people because I chose to do what others won't do. Hopefully I can have what others can't get. <laughs> Toastmasters, club number 1500, and on May 6th, we will be celebrating our 60th year. Wow, my goodness, where should, what should I ask? What should I ask? Okay, your favorite quote. Why don't we just take the quotes? Why don't we? Well balanced women seldom make history. Lauren Thatcher. Earl, Earl Rich. Right. Yes, it's actually well behaved. Right? Yes. <laughs> I can't resist the glasses, but okay. So now, would you like to elaborate a little bit? Well, I tease my friends who know me well. I was raised in a family with three older brothers. So dainty just never occurred to me. I mean, they used me as a football. It's a family story. And so I didn't know that there were boundaries. And so I tend to find myself saying, well, I can do that. And people go, so I guess I'm not very well behaved. I'm not sure I'm making history, but I'm sure having a good time. Wow, well, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> Would you like to tell us your club and your club number, please? I can't tell 
Well, why you? But I will say that my home club is the center in Paris Park, and I'm a proud new member of Chautauqua. Okay, round of applause. Well, I'm also a singer, for those who don't know. I'm a singer as well, but I'm not a college like. Could you tell them? Oh, tell. Okay. don't hide it. Oh, yeah, don't hide it. Okay. So, you say your notable accomplishments, but we are, oh, no, 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 I like this one, Tai Chi. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to tell us how you got started in Tai Chi and why? Briefly, how long? Oh, briefly. <laughs> in fact, I was back there flowing my energy All right. using a breathing exercise because what it does is not only stimulate the positive in you, it takes away all your nervousness as well. We started Tai Chi together, my husband and I, at Moraine Valley. We went into a summer program, and after eight weeks we said, we have to continue this, because it's been doing wonderful things for us. Now the problem is, is that the class we go to is 8 a.m. on a sun Saturday morning. Not my favorite time of day, being a singer. <laughs> But it has been a blessing every way towards health and well-being. And I said, oh, 
No, don't lose your tooth in Chicago because the tooth fairy doesn't know where Chicago is. <laughs> so the three-year-old picked up on that, and when she was wiggling her tooth before we had popcorn, he said, don't lose your tooth because the tooth fairy doesn't know where Chicago is. <laughs> so I love them because they make me laugh. <laughs> Bob Roman, would you please tell us your club's name and your club's number, please? The club I'm representing is Club 8308, the twice as nice Toastmasters. <laughs> inspired and motivated to want to hold all the elected club and district offices. Please, please share. <laughs> I have a confession to make. When I first joined Toastmasters, I was worried about soiling my pants every time I got up to speak. <laughs> so when they mentioned contests, I don't want to go contest. I can't even get out of my club. No contest. So I was bothered so much, I decided, hey, I found out the area governors don't have to be in the contest. <laughs> well, now I know. Just wear a good, good look on your pins. Suburban Toastmasters, club number 612. Oh, I thought you were 66 oh, no, no. years. I was like, man, you look good. property manager and how does it relate to the Toastmasters with the wall right here, the rail, and then the okay. You're a property manager. Share with us how you decided to become a property manager. Well how many of you used to watch the cartoon with Snidely Whiplash? <laughs> you know, pay the rent, I can't pay the rent. Well that's my job. I go to people and say pay the rent and they say I can't pay the rent. Oh, it's not it's sad. Right. It's really sad. So, you know, you've got to be good at screening people. Now, I do a lot of screening, so once they're in, they can pay them. And then it's, you know, leaky roofs, butt toilets. It's not exactly exciting. Um, this place is in pretty good shape. <laughs> <laughs> we scratches, and we would, you know, we'd go through, we'd sniff it. That's my life. Well, it sounds like a very exciting life. <laughs> 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 it's a very exciting life, for sure exciting. So, on the end, of the Toastmasters International, we would like to present you with a certificate of participation and the, the thing I'm a jig, what's the thing I'm a call that came off of it? You get two. Before I do, 
do, I would like to just say thank you. It has been my great pleasure and honor being able to stand up here before you today to be your Toastmaster. God bless. serve. We appreciate you so. And I have to just give a shout out to my team. Didn't they make me look good? Yeah. <laughs> now those who know me know I am a hugger. So, here's the deal. Here's the drill. When I talk <laughs> Get some 
photos taken. Everybody 